let's look at a melanoma. All right. So here we had a biopsy. This was a, a shave biopsy. They, they've taken a little blade. The dermatologist has scooped out a little bit of skin and shaved it out. We cut it in half and then kind of embedded both of those halves on end and then sliced the slide here. So again, we're looking from top to bottom. And um, you can see that the one difference from the other skin is that we have these little round clusters of grayish cells in here. These are melanocytes and they're clustered together into what we call a nest. Now, sometimes when melanocytes make nests, it's benign and they're just a benign nevus. I actually did not pull up an example of a benign nevus to show, but, but we do see that sometimes where we just have nests of benign looking melanocytes and that's just a normal nevus. And there's a lot of different types of nevi and it's actually kind of complicated. So it may be a little too much to go into in a video yeah, here. Let's not do that. Let's just show the melanoma inside too. Okay, cool. So this... This at first glance, I could look at and think, you know, this could actually be a nevus. The cells are a little bit enlarged, but they're looking like they're in nests. But this was a case where I, I knew because of all the training I've had and the many cases I've seen that this looked a little bit like a nevus, but I was pretty sure that it was going to be something worse than a nevus. For one thing, one clue is I have a lot of that solar elastosis, that gray colored dermis down here. It's not as bad as the last case I showed you, but I could tell even without any history, this person's older and has had some sun exposure, a good bit of sun exposure over time. And um, so what I did in this case is I looked at it and I was pretty sure that there were going to be some, some findings in here that would tell me that we were dealing with a melanoma in the epidermis, what we call a melanoma in situ. So um, I did some stains to help me visualize the melanocytes better, that I could see that the cells were down here, but I thought there were some extra cells moving up towards the surface that were hiding in here and were a little difficult to see. So when that happens, we can use stains to help us make the melanocytes stand out with a different color and help us to visualize them better. So I'm gonna show you that now. And here is an example of one of those stains. So this stain is called SOX10, S-O-X-10. There's another stain that some dermatopathologists will use that's called MART1 or Melon A. It's a little different uh, variation, but it does the same kind of thing. It's a stain that stains melanocytes. SOX10 also stains some other things like nerve cells and stuff. So uh, it's, uh, it's a marker. It will now, it will stain normal melanocytes, benign nevus melanocytes, and also malignant melanoma melanocytes. So it doesn't tell me by itself if they're benign or malignant. It just helps me see the pattern. So I told you earlier that melanocytes normally, when in their normal state, they live along the bottom layer, and we don't like to see them moving up towards the top layer of skin, but that's exactly what they're doing here. All the red dots you see are the nuclei of melanocytes. And they're along the bottom, yes, but there's tons of them trickling all the way up to the very top layers of the skin. So that's what we call pagetoid spread or pagetoid scatter. And it's a pattern of uh, growth in melanocytes that generally is not good. It generally is a, a one of the clues towards malignancy. The problem is, is it it's really complicated in deciding sometimes what's enough to make a, a melanocytic lesion malignant. There, there's not any one certain specific feature. It's a combination of all the patterns together, put together with the clinical situation, what kind of skin it is, if there's sun damage or not. Those things all together help us decide if it's melanoma. So that's part of, goes back to part of how we were talking about at the beginning. It's kind of complicated. It's not a simple thing that you can just look at and say, oh, there's one cell at the top, it must be melanoma. So in this case, in the sun damaged skin of an older person with numerous melanocytes trickling up there and scattering up towards the top of the skin, that's a bad sign. And then also when I looked over here at the edges, let me see over here, I could see the melanocytes didn't stop. They kept going and going and trickling out. So this is a type of melanoma in situ uh, that, that some people call lentigo maligna. And it's a type of melanoma in situ that usually occurs in chronically sun damaged skin, often on the head and neck, the face or the scalp of older adults. And it's called lentigo maligna because it can look kind of like uh, clinically to the naked eye. It can look a little bit like a benign lentigo, which are those brown sunspots that you see in older adults. But under the microscope, it looks different. So that's why dermatologists do biopsies, because sometimes it's hard to tell them apart for sure. Clinically, we have to look at it under the microscope. So the next question you might have is, what do we mean by in situ? Uh, aren't all melanomas the same? Definitely not. There's a big difference. And the biggest difference is in number one, is the melanoma confined to that top layer of skin, the epidermis? If it is, we call that in situ. In situ is the Latin word for meaning in, in the place where it originally started, basically. So normally, 
melanocytes live in the epidermis. So if a melanoma happens and stays in the epidermis, that means the melanoma is in situ. It's in the place where the melanocytes normally belong. They are still abnormal melanocytes, but they have not invaded down into the dermis. And the good thing about this is if you get, it's, it's still something that needs to be removed and treated, but if it's removed completely, the chance of anything bad happening from this is very, very low, close to zero. There are some rare exceptions to that rule, but generally melanomas can only spread to other parts of the body or, or cause death if they are able to invade and get into the blood vessels or lymphatics and spread to other parts of the body. Melanoma in situ by itself, if you get it when it's still in situ and in the epidermis, it doesn't have that potential to spread to other parts of the body. So this was one that was totally in the epidermis. We couldn't see any invasion into the dermis. So this is melanoma in situ. That's a great, great like description about what the difference is between um, a uh, atypical mole melanoma in situ. And uh, so basically this is a really important for the people who's listening. That is um, when you get a pathology report and you want to look at the, for the word melanoma in situ, if you see the word in situ, the prognosis, the treatment is actually very, very good. The treatment is very easy. Yeah. Um, and then just bring up this example. So this, you brought up the point that this is a lenticle malignant. It's a type of melanoma in situ, most of the time in the sun exposed face, sun exposed, you know, like the face, um, an elderly individual. And this sometimes gets very tricky because sometimes surgical uh, excision is obviously the standard approach, but sometimes it gets to be too big and you can't resect it. And uh, so we have other options such as using Imicomod or Aldera, uh, even though sometimes it's not FDA approved, but uh, we have some good results and some people even advocate for radiation, but we can talk about. Yeah, that's, that. that's a good point that there, I did say it should be excised and generally that's what happens, but there are some, some complicated exceptions, certainly where, where it's not feasible to always remove the whole thing, but, but other treatments uh, get used in those cases. And why I, don't we I to Dr. Wong there. Why don't we shift gears a little bit? Talk about what invasive melanoma look like. Sure. Oh, and I did forget one other picture I wanted to show you here. Sure. That, that comes up sometimes is what is PRAIM? PRAIM oh, is yeah. a newer that's right. marker that's come out in the past, I don't know, five to mm -hmm. seven, maybe it's been six or seven years now. And it's a marker that is often positive in melanoma cells and often negative in benign melanocytes or benign nevi. Now, no stain is perfect or 100%. That's a, one thing I've learned over many years of doing this is stains are a useful tool that help pathologists but we can't, stains are not like a magic marker that solve all of our problems. Um, unfortunately, uh, it would be nice that we are always looking for the magic stain that will solve the problem perfectly of is this cancer or not cancer, not just in skin pathology, but in all areas of pathology. But unfortunately, most of the stains, there is nuance to it. But, but this stain can be helpful if we're kind of on the fence, if we're not sure if something's atypical, but we're not sure if it could be a really atypical mole, an atypical nevus, or if it's actually melanoma. Sometimes there doing that SOX 10 stain or MART 1 like I just showed can be helpful. Also doing PRAIM can be helpful. So PRAIM here, all of the brown nuclei um, are, are all the melanocytes and most of the melanocytes, so pretty strong expression of PRAIM in this case. So that's a pretty good sign that it's probably melanoma. Now, it's not, again, it's not perfect. There are times where nevus can express PRAIM and sometimes you can have melanomas that are negative for PRAIM, but it can be a really helpful tool in certain situations um, and so that's where it comes, uh, the experience of being a dermatopathologist comes in handy of knowing this is a time where this will really help or would not really be helpful. But I just thought I'd show that since it's probably something that, that more and more patients will hear about or read about in their pathology report. Um, and so uh, when a, a melanoma is usually or oftentimes you know, express prame in the majority of their cells, and that's uncommon, not impossible, but uncommon in benign nevi. All right.